Привет! In this episode of Garage from Asia, I'm going to finally finish off this supercharger install. Yes! Obviously not the car, there's still a lot to do. Um, but it has not stopped raining. Oh my god, it's been intense. I now know how the Scottish feel like. It just hasn't stopped. It's just been raining day after day. It's, it sucks. But we finally got a bit of a... Uh, well, it's not even sunshine, a bit of cloud. So gonna finish this off while I have a chance then the next one to have it works out episodes brake suspension a few other bits and pieces bit of wiring probably um, and then put it on a dyno there's an all-wheel drive dyno near me so I'm going to throw him on there see what it makes um, hopefully it's something pretty decent it's, it's probably still gonna be lower than my Peugeot it's not gonna be like Evo or Barra decent sort of thing but it should be good for an old Soviet lighter but for now, let's finish him off, finally. So we're gonna get stuck right into it and start making up the bracket for the accelerator cable. It doesn't need to be anything too spectacular, but this is the way that I made it. So here we are with the bracket, sort of most of the cutting done. Um, the only thing left is drill a hole, cut it out and bend this bit up because once that's bent up that's where the accelerator cable will go and that'll hold it there. You know, it's, um, it's no binky bracket but it'll do, it'll do what it's meant to do anyway. Um, if you've got a laser cutter obviously use that because it'll come out significantly better. Um, I don't, I wish I did. Or you can obviously pay someone, but this will do as long as it works. It's pretty thick steel, so it shouldn't flex. And it's only for an accelerator, so it's not under a tremendous amount of pressure. Um, and yeah, it's probably thicker steel than it really needs to be, but... Yeah. So, I'll drill a hole, cut it out, fold it. And that's pretty much the bracket done after I give it a bit of a clean up and a wee bit of paint Let's finish him off that was pretty close it was sort of sitting where it is where it's meant to be um, I'll just have to cut a bit out of here And once that's cleared, that'll pretty much be it. If I give him a bit of a paint job, it should be done. So here it is. Just cut a sort of a bit of a V out. And yeah. That's all it needs. So, um, yeah, that's it done. So, I'll give this a bit of a hit of paint, just some flat black, and um, yeah, let him drive and throw him on. So you could go like full binky on this and do some glorious bracket, but essentially it is just an accelerator cable. Look, it's not under a tremendous amount of pressure, so. That'll do. And once it's black, shouldn't stand out too much. All right, so you've got the blanking plate that I made up. Um, it's nothing too sort of spectacular, interesting. It is just a plate to stop dust and water and stuff getting in. Um, so you can probably just use gasket goop. Bolt him on. Um, I'll get the original gaskets because it's you might as well. It's cheap enough. Um, then I've got to make another order of parts for this thing because cars like this it's easy just to buy a box load of stuff every time you need it because the postage times and the postage cost it's easier and cheaper just to get a box full of stuff 
So next time I order some stuff, I'll just order a gasket. Um, it's not like I'm going to be driving this anytime soon. So there we go. So the blanking plate is on. Yeah, just him on down there. Hard to see, but she's all on. So I'll go back to putting the accelerator cable on. Alrighty, so we're going to do the choke cable now. To get to the back of it, to pull it out, um, you have to remove the gauge cluster. Now if you've got a right hand drive model like this, you have to be so careful with it because uh, they, well, they don't make them anymore. If you've got a left hand drive model, it's perfectly fine. They make them, they cost stuff all. Um, but just be so careful with it. Same as, you know, the dash pad, anything that makes it right hand drive specific is going to be difficult to replace, or to find, at least. So, with that in mind, I'm going to remove them and change the choke cable. And these, it is just clips. Alrighty, so the track cable is in, looks exactly the same as the old one. Um, instead of reading it through the top of the bulkhead where it used to go, it, I've now got it so it, it goes down over the other side of the column and then at the exact same hole as the accelerator. Um, it doesn't pull any harder, it's sort of a nice smooth run through. Um, while you might ask, so in the engine bay, it'll run alongside the accelerator cable and it'll look, just look, it'll look a little bit neater, it'll look a little bit nicer. 
Um, the engine bay is not a very good looking place at the moment, but you know, after the supercharger's finished and I do a few more bits and pieces, um, I'm going to take out all the stuff on the sides, weld up the holes that are there and paint it and make the engine bay look nice or fix up the wiring, all that sort of stuff. So eventually this will make sense. At the moment you go, why would you bother? But now we have to cut the cable to the right length because it's way too long. I assume it's too long for left hand drive because it'll be over there and run a little bit longer. I assume I mean, it's, it probably, it's probably just longer so you can do things like this. So there's this little clip that, that is on the back of the um, track cable and that just stops it coming out any further than it needs to be. So pull that out and then you can pull this cable out. So what you want to do is get a good amount extra. You can never have too much length. So why you might ask, we'll go to the engine bay and we'll have a look. Alrighty, so this is why I decided to route it this way. So it's just alongside the same as the cable, rather than being, uh, where does it come from? Up here. So originally it was up there, sort of came around back into here. Now it'll run alongside there and just look a little bit nicer. So the reason why I pulled the cable out is because we're going to cut it to length down here. Um, and the, the inner cable obviously needs to be longer than the outer shield so it just needs to be it'll wedge into this bracket here so it just needs to be cut along here somewhere oh, cut it on there. that's pretty easy So that's him pretty much sorted. So I'm just going to push the cable back through and attach him in there. Another job done. Try and get the corners out of it. But... On to the next job. So we're at the uh, pointy end of it now. The last thing I'm going to be doing is the wiring for the fuel pump. So that's the original plug that came off it. It's going to put some waterproof ones in there because it's, it, it, it's out in the open, water can get to it. And obviously it needs a relay and a fuse. So what I've got here is an aftermarket fuse box and relay. Um, this is a used one I got off one of my cars that I no longer have. That's why there's wiring and stuff coming out the bottom of it. But for the 
time being I'm going to use this. I've ordered two more, but it takes time to get here. Um, I did want to put this inside the car, but there's sort of nowhere real room that either won't look shit or won't really be accessible. So it'll be going in the engine bay, unfortunately, but it should be right. Um, but yeah, for the time being, I'll wire this up, and then when the new one gets here, I'll just switch him over. Let's finish it off. The wiring diagram for the fuel pump is the same as if you were wiring in any other accessory. The only difference is the addition of a small module that shuts off fuel in the event of a crash, which I haven't bought yet. It's all pretty much done for the time being. Um, it's all sort of just sitting here. The loom is still open because there's still going to be a lot more going in here. Not to do with the supercharger or the fuel pump or anything, but like um, spotties, air compressor, inverter, stuff like that. All the relays and fuses are going to be in here. Keep it all nice and clean. And then once that's done, I'll wrap the loom and I'll mount this properly. It'll probably mount back there somewhere. I'll do some sort of try and keep it sealed because obviously going through water crossings but yeah wrap the whole loom and clean the whole loom up when I do that in case I have to add anything to it for the time being yeah she looks alright still a long way to go once this wiring loom's done it'll look a lot better in here because once the loom's done I'll paint the engine bay and she look good under here. I'm probably going to put the, uh, I haven't got a thermo fan. That one didn't fit. It fouled on the uh, pulleys. There's not much room there. The pulleys sort of push it out a bit more so I might have to put it at the front. Which doesn't work quite as well but yeah, it works good enough. Yeah, probably the next video won't be about the the larder but the next larder video I'll try and get all the jobs done maybe finish off the wiring do the brakes and then we'll be able to take it to the dyno near me which is all sorts of exciting but until then thanks for watching